big deal at these times. Change is the only constant in today's world. To win in unpredictable markets, beat inflation, and protect your finances from geopolitical risks, you need to build a volatility-proof portfolio. And that's why we're back with Navab and the Wizard. Watch Ramesh Damani in conversation with influential market veterans as they share their insights and analysis of the complex world order, the future of investing, and building a portfolio for an ever-changing world. Wizards of the Street at these times. This is TV18 and you're watching CNBC TV18. Hello and welcome to Big Deal. Now today on the show we are picking one sector which has seen maximum private equity participation and also this space has seen a fair bit of deals. In fact, the larger, largest merger that we have seen this year has come from this particular sector and also promises to be active in the coming new year. We are talking about the housing finance sector which has in the last few years created a bigger bucket of listed companies, especially in the affordable housing space. Let's welcome on the show M. Anandan, who is the founder of Aptus Value Housing and Sumit Nagar of Malabar Investments, which owns, remember, a minority stake in Aptus. Gentlemen, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Now, with both of you on the panel, we are aiming to get a full picture of the sector from the point of view of the investor as well as the company. So, Sumit, starting with you, what about Malabar's investment strategy here and how does Aptus does investment fit into it? Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for uh, having me on the show. Um, you know, Malabar's strategy has been about finding niche industry sectors that have long-term secular you know, growth trends that are favorable. Um, and then number two, within that, to find outstanding companies or businesses uh, which are run by terrific management teams that capitalize on that. And, and so in some ways, sort of after you know, fits in that perfectly, right? So you have this affordable housing finance sector, uh, which has seen very limited penetration and has a long runway for growth. And then within that, you have a company like Aptus, uh, which has just been an outstanding performer uh, in, in the southern Indian market, um, where they are the preeminent player in the affordable housing finance space. So it sort of epitomizes uh, the strategy of finding, uh, you know, a, a market which is great long-term tailwind and then finding a great player within that within that industry all right so that's your investment thesis and especially what you see in aptis so let me ask the company m anandan welcome to this discussion now you've been now uh, you know serving and financing the affordable housing space for a few decades now now Penetration has been one of the key challenges, especially in the lower income group, that credit culture hasn't really picked up. Besides that, while we enter into a situation of we are, we are seeing high inflation, interest rate hardening, and also job losses, how do you see this sector develop from here on? Uh, th uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, the affordable housing finance sector which caters to the largely the informal segment of uh, the customers coming from lower and middle income population, largely from tier three, tier four cities, uh, has been historically has been underserved, unserved for a variety of reasons. Uh, but uh, the uh, the need for homes and the need for home loans are much higher uh, in this segment. Um, so, in other words, there is, uh, you know, there is a large market, significant market of home loan finance is there, typically in the uh, quartile two, quartile three uh, population of India, comprising largely lower and middle income, and tier three, tier four cities, largely informal, and uh, this, uh, you know, gives an opportunity, uh, you know, uh, to one is really an ability to channelize institutional funding like banks and other sources from you now to the informal segments of the population, which helps in financial inclusion. Same time, uh, ability to provide uh, housing 
to the needy segments uh, of the uh, population. And that's where also it provides an excellent uh, business opportunity for a continuous, consistent growth for many years to come. And if you do your, if your metrics are well, you can even aim for uh, more than, uh, much more than the growth rate, which is there, which is available in the formal housing finance sector. So in other words, given the low penetration and uh, large pie, it provides a large opportunities going forward. Right, uh, the opportunity is there, but we have to see the penetration. How soon can that particular situation be corrected? Because if I remember, insurance took uh, more than a decade uh, to really come into the mindset and become a much bigger uh, you know, play in India. So what do you think about this, Sumit? Uh, when we talk about the interest rate hardening scenario, as well as some of the consumption taking a hit because of prices going up, how do you view this sector in a changed environment? See, from, you know, first, just to complete this point on penetration, I think, uh, you know, Aptis, for example, has been going at over 40% year on year over the last several years. And, and going, you know, even now it's sort of growing more than 30% year on year. So that's the way that the penetration sort of gets sorted, is that you have a growth rate which is far faster than the economic growth rate. And that's how slowly you, you, uh, uh, you know, you collect the low penetration issue. Um, in terms of the interest rate hardening, um, see the, the, the hardening interest rate only has limited impact on the housing finance business because uh, it only impacts the new flow. It's only the new incremental borrowing that happens at the new interest rate. Um, and if you manage your assets and liabilities sort of very well, it, start, it has some impact, but not too much, right? So that's number one. Number two is that you also have other levers in terms of your OPEX uh, that you can manage and control. And then there's asset quality. So in this environment coming out of COVID, in most cases, for most housing finance companies or other financial companies, asset quality is improving, and as a result, the credit cost is coming off. So it has the ability to absorb some of that uh, impact. But the most important is that the affordable housing companies have wide enough spread that they can absorb the minimal increase in, in, in the interest on the overall book much easier compared to um, uh, compared to markets where the, that margin may be thin or where the, the asset is more long, long duration. So we think that affordable housing finance companies like Aptos can actually absorb this in, increase in interest rate a lot better. That's right. Uh, you talk about, uh, talked about the growth uh, in this particular space. And yes, it has huge, tremendous growth potential and has been growing at a faster pace. But uh, Sumit, as an investor, Help us understand, uh, you know, the valuation dynamics. Uh, fair bit of affordable housing companies have listed in the last few years. Aptis has been a recent one. But despite the growth trajectory for the company and the operational performance, the shareholder value return has been on the lower side. In fact, it has been lower than the IPO price. So that has been the case, so it's, but it's only been a one year, right? And, and this is a marathon, it's a long journey. And I think what you do see is that the company has been through this period since the listing has, uh, uh, has actually demonstrated stellar operating performance. I mean, they've grown their earnings quite substantially. They've grown all the operating parameters and improved them. So what happens is, you know, you go through these phases of the market where the price may not appreciate much, but the operating performance continues to improve. And essentially what happens is that your multiple keeps getting compressed. And that's like a compressed spring. At some point, it, it, it ends up expanding. Mm. And, and, and so we've seen this happen in many cases in the past where companies do well, but the prices don't respond to that. But eventually, they always do. Uh, and so that's what is happening in cases. After today, it's a, it's a short phase. And eventually, the market performance has to be in line with the underlying operating earnings performance. Uh, that's what we've always seen. And that's that should right. happen here as well. All right. Uh, so, but but the you know stock uh, market valuation is a function of many factors, and probably uh, that scarcity premium in this particular space has also gone. So, whether it's up for re-rating in terms of valuation needs to be seen. 
But uh, M. Anandan, what do you think about this? And what is the growth strategy? We know your numbers from the last quarter. But what is your growth strategy going forward? What are the levers that you are going to really push for shareholder return? Because you have the listed uh, stock where there are retail participants. But you also have Westbridge with a substantial stake of 37%. We have uh, also got Malabar with 7.7% stake in the company. No, the company has got clear, uh, you know, growth plans for a consistent, uh, uh, substantial growth for many years to come. Uh, and this growth, you know, as far as the capital is concerned, this company is very well capitalized with high capital adequacy. And in terms of it has got the, you know, significant strength in terms of reach through the branch network. And more importantly, the company has built an excellent credit appraisal system for this category of customer, this profile customers. That's our uh, strength because this uh, credit appraisal system is really, uh, really acted as a very good stress tester. Trust, you know, in, uh, in the in the last uh, uh, ten years, and more so in the last two three years on account of COVID. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, all of us have gone through uh, different, uh, you know, uh, impact on business. But Aptos has been able to do uh, exceedingly well, even during this, uh, you know, stress times, mainly because of its excellent uh, credit underwriting and collection systems. Right. Uh, so that having established in terms of uh, a good product, product delivery, and nearness to customer, uh, better service, in the form of branch network mm. and uh and it, the, and uh, apart from that we operate we have one of the lowest operating costs and our delinquency calls also cost also is one of the lowest yes in fact uh you know a little while ago we touched on the uh, inflation and the interest rate be surprised that uh, we have, despite significant increase in interest rates which is affecting uh you know the uh, most part of the financial intermediaries, but after we have not yet revised our EMI so far, yes. we are able to absorb whatever the increase in interest right. is within ourselves because of, of our very strong uh, liability, you know, front size. Right, uh, Mr. Uh, Anandan, I, I take that point, and it's a very important point that uh, that interest rate hike has not been transmitted and passed on to the consumers, but that is an industry-wide phenomena also. But there are many, many aspects uh, to talk about, and wherever there is a private equity participation, there has to be an M&A or some deal potential going forward, as has been the case with the sector. We'll talk more about the deal dynamics when we come back after a very short break on Big Deal. Stay tuned.